For a couple of hours every week, a group of seniors stricken with Parkinson's disease is getting a much-needed reprieve from the debilitating symptoms that haunt their daily lives. The treatment program is drug-free, basically cost-free, yet the results are profound. I traveled to Toronto, Canada recently to see firsthand what doctors can't explain, a simple approach to a complex disease offering these brave men and women a few precious moments of dignity, all with the help of early show fitness expert Sarah Robichaux. If five years before I got the Parkinson's, people had got me to make a list of the things that I would likely never ever do in my life, taking dance lessons would have been at the top. Yet for nearly two years, Alan Lyall has been dancing here. Four and When I can feel the music, it's easier to do the motions. Doing the preposterous badly is a way ahead of not doing anything. The notion that people with Parkinson's can dance, especially in the advanced stages of the disease, never struck Sarah Robichaux as preposterous. And that may be the secret to her success. With no medical training and no funding, this lifelong dancer simply followed her heart. I honestly thought this is my chance to do volunteer work, to, to, to do my give back. Adele is going to mirror whatever I do. We really never say the word Parkinson's in the class. We all know, but it, it's just that understood, I'm here and I'm going to do my best today and just, you know, come and have fun. Founded in Toronto in 2008, Dancing with Parkinson's has shown incredible results. Patients who can barely make it in the door unassisted often walk out on their own. It's very clear at the end of the hour, at the end of the recital, that this is working. And it's working faster than a medication does. Tango step again. The downside, the results barely last through the trip home. Behavioral neurologist Dr. Tiffany Chow and her colleagues are now studying the class and these dancers to try to figure out why this hour has such an immediate, tangible impact. Apparently, there's a lock and key that Sarah has the combination to, and we need to figure out what that is. Step. It could be the music. It could be the movements. Are you seeing that curtain? Are you feeling that curtain as you press it back? You use the image today of, of pushing back a curtain. What is it about imagery that helps unlock those moves? If we can visualize that there's a curtain in front of us and we just need to push open that curtain, somehow, much of the time, it actually works. And no one is ruling out the power of Sarah herself, least of all her students. Bring it home! She's an extraordinary, extraordinary person. And I defy anybody to be in her presence for an hour and not feel better. Wow. It was such an incredible experience. One thing that really stood out, Dr. Tiffany Chow said to me, she said, we've known for a while that Parkinson's patients, they lose voluntary movement. But for example, if they're in a nursing home and there's a fire and they say, fire, everybody get out, there's something in their brain that clicks and people have been shown, even with severe Parkinson's, to be able to get up and run out. So they're trying wow. to figure out what this connection is and they're actually using, uh, they're studying the eye movement of all of these patients in the dance class to figure out why it works and why the results don't last longer. It looks as though dance really unlocks these people. It does. And it's, I think it's been amazing for Sarah, too. I mean, it's wonderful to hear her talk about it. Her students are just enamored with her, as is Dr. Chow and a lot of the other doctors she's worked with. You know, her background wasn't in Parkinson's, but she had a client who had, developed, who had Parkinson's, and she said, I'm going to find a way to give this person some relief. And she's now in such high demand. She has a waiting list for her classes. Wow. People are trying to get her to give them, you know, not just in Canada, but also in the U.S. as well. So it's been a great experience. What a great story, and what a sweet man, too, huh? Oh, Alan was amazing. Nice. And he just had a birthday, so happy birthday, Alan. Terrific. Just ahead, what's easier, talking to girls or talking to Santa? Advice for kids of all ages from the best-selling 10-year-old author of How to Talk to Girls. You're watching The Early Show on CBS.